putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. What's up, everybody? Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show, KJRadio.com. So we've been talking about the Golden Globes, Oprah Winfrey, Oprah for president, who's going to run for president, lots of different things. I'm having, having a lot of fun myself on this stuff. And, uh, but I want, to, I want to talk about what happens when you escalate, or as James Clyburn would say, escalate to that level. You enter a whole new realm. And despite electing a fraud like Barack Obama, we now have a president that we know a lot about. We know about his divorces. We know about his, you know, his bankruptcies. We know about all the different things, you know, a lot of stuff. We know a lot about Donald Trump. He's written books about himself. And being a, such a public figure, he's had a lot of time for scrutiny. He's been political without being into politics. And we know a ton about him. We know a lot more about this man than we've ever p- potentially know about Barack Obama. We may not know about Barack Obama for thir- three generations. But what that brings up is the dirt. You get a lot of dirt on people as they go through the through the ranks. And Oprah Winfrey, I'm going to tell you something. She's a fabricated story. Probably less well known than our former half black president. History that's as much fiction as Huck Finn. And there was a 2010 story Fox uh, Fox News did that profiled a guy who was writing a book about Oprah Winfrey, and he says this, Oprah Winfrey, who built a billion-dollar empire persuading everyone from celebs to average Joes to reveal the truth about themselves, is a big phony when it comes to her own past. Winfrey's relationship with longtime love, Stedman, her reputed dirt-poor upbringing in rural Mississippi, her rumored lesbian crushes on women such as Diane Sawyer, all her stories she's manipulated for decades, in the name of sensational ratings. This is a Kitty Kelly's book. Now, Kitty Kelly is a sensationalist. I'll tell you that right now. But still, sometimes she gets the facts right. She says Winfrey concocted stories about her sexual abuse as she suffered as a child and grossly exaggerated the poverty that she grew up in. She went on to say that Oprah went to great lengths to conceal her lesbian affairs. And quite frankly, I don't care that I don't care about. But here's where it gets kind of interesting. They say Oprah, who claims that, you know, she was I mean, she admits to being promiscuous and things like this and and talking about rape. It turns out she was just pretty much selling herself on the street, essentially a prostitute. And and, uh, and, and people have described her as that family members. Oprah doesn't know the real identity of her biological father. Again, I don't care, but. Why, why take the story to another level? They say her relationship with her mother is so cold. She won't let the older woman have her phone number. Won't let her mom have her phone number. Now, again, I get it. It happens. People have relationships where they go. I'm not talking to you. I don't want you to get a hold of me. I personally don't understand how you do that to a parent. I had a parent who was in prison and I still took his calls. And it was, I was, this got me thinking because I get asked a lot, Kevin. Um, so when, when did you stop becoming, stop being a Democrat? And I go, I was never a Democrat. What? And it's almost like they're disappointed (laughs) that I don't have this, you know, I don't know, story of redemption. And I, I always think to myself, is it not bad enough that my mother died before my fifth birthday and my father spent the majority of his life in prison? So I didn't have him. But no, they want to know, you, you, surely you were at some point a Democrat, right? Or, you know, made the trend. No, I wasn't. And, and as poor as we were as a family growing up, when I talk about it in my book, I still don't lament it. I don't, it isn't like we were so poor. Oh, you know, we were so poor. Oh, my goodness, I wore the same shoes and couldn't get in. I mean, we, had, we were poor. I know we were. But there were many things that made me rich. And I say that. Well, I felt rich in so many ways. Anyway, back to Oprah. So the thing about people like Oprah and others, they know the story. It plays the rags to riches story plays very well. These conversion stories do very well. The Horatio Alger types. And, you know, just for the record, you know, anybody else that's done that? Maybe has a bit of a funny name. Know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I do. 
Win, uh, Winfrey was born in, I, don't, I can't even say this, it was Kosuko, Mississippi in 1954. And this, this article says the way she likes to tell it, she was so impoverished that she never had any new dresses or dolls and had to adopt two cockroaches as pets, naming them Melinda and Sandy. Now that tells me right there, she's making it up. You know, she's, she's joking. Yeah, we were, we were so poor, you know, had a, you know, the electric company came and blew out our candles. But, and, and, and this is where I get, I think the story gets kind of interesting. Her family goes, it's nonsense. They weren't well off, but they said she was relatively spoiled as a little girl. And here's what her uh, a relative, Catherine Carr Esther, says, where Oprah got that nonsense about growing up in filth and roaches, I have no idea. Why do you tell such lies? That's what people want to hear. The truth is boring. Now, to Oprah's credit, I say this. She turned her life around. But why the lies? And here's a part of the story that doesn't play well with her disdain for men. As a teen, they say Oprah was a wild child, promiscuous to the point of prostitution. This is what her relatives say. Okay, this isn't I mean, this isn't conjecture. They said the future star would steal from her mother's purse, pawn her jewelry, even turn tricks. She was eventually here's where it gets really interesting, sent to live in Nashville with Vernon Winfrey, who was her mother's former lover and who is listed on her birth certificate as her father. He's been described as a domineering disciplinarian who set her straight. Now, here's why this story is of interest to me. Oprah has a man in her life who set her straight. He's the one who got her on a straight and narrow. Do you think that Oprah Winfrey, I'm not saying, I don't know what she's done for this man and all that, but why would you go on TV uh, during the Golden Globes and talk about men and when you know women are oppressed and women this that and the other and I've already given you a litany of other men who've helped Oprah get to where she is a man got her on a straight and narrow now there are other rumors floating around about her lesbian stuff and all that I don't really care but what I do care about is the idea that here again is another person who you don't know much about She's built a billion dollar empire. And honestly, if the truth came out about Oprah Winfrey, she'd be penniless. She never would have gotten where she's gotten. She it's a fabrication. And you wonder why she was able to put, to play the role in the color purple so well. She's been playing a role her whole life. And there are people like Oprah. They love the attention. I, I've, I was when I looked went to look for pictures when we posted a story about her. I was looking for pictures and I was thinking to myself, wow, this lady has hung out with the top, you know, the most glamorous people in the world. If you took the net worth of the people that Oprah Winfrey has interviewed, we couldn't even, I mean, we couldn't buy their coats. <laughs> you know what I mean? Th- these are people that, and, and I'll be honest with you, I don't care about stars. I think it's a ridiculous notion. When my friends have me over, we I got some friends that live next to me, not too far from me, and they are overjoyed when I come over. And they it's funny, they think I don't realize it, but they'll call other friends who are Fox people, you know, who watch Fox, and they just all happen to kind of be at the house. And I think to myself, okay, first of all, I'm on to you, but... And it's kind of cute. It's flattering. I, don't misunderstand me. I don't feel you know like, oh, look at you. But I think to myself, really, guys, I'm not that big. of a, I'm not a big deal at all. I, when I say I'm not that big of a deal, I'm not a big deal. It's not that I'm not that big of a deal. I'm not a big deal, period. So why the hoopla? I've never understood it. Don't misunderstand me. I have people I really respect. Like I was I, I was uh, I saw Herschel Walker uh, the other day on the um he was out with the Georgia Bulldogs during the, the championship game. And uh, I saw Herschel. I was like, hey, I hadn't seen Herschel in a while. Warms my heart because I know him. Bo Jackson, one of my idols, man, probably one of the best athletes ever. You know, definitely get excited when if I get a chance to see Bo. But I'm not like, ooh, Google, gaga, 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 what's going on? You know, I just don't. It, I, I see big name stars. I hang out with people that I think, you know, a lot of people go, wow, he's a, you know, amazing person. And I just look at it as no big deal. They're, they're guys that put their pants on like me. But if you are into that, Oprah Winfrey has seen everybody. She's been, I mean, I saw a picture of her with Brad and Angelina, you know, 
who hasn't wanted to meet Brad and Angelina? Right. I'm just saying, you know, they were they're the biggest some of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Remember the Tom Cruise uh, thing when he jumped up on the. I mean, these are people in their prime. She sees everybody. And I bet you that's what she wanted to do her whole life. She wanted to be the person that was around those people. And it made her bigger than life. And she is. She's bigger than life. But is she really? If you know her real story. He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.